Well, today I wanted to start off with just a really cool view. We're looking out of the Martian lab here uh, at our mountain out there, Mount Fuji, as Wrangler Star would say. And uh, just a beautiful morning here. Gorgeous. So I want to talk to you about what we're going to be working on here today. Um, as you know, in previous videos, we've talked about the water problem we have out in the, um, the habitat. So today we're actually going to be wiring up some sensors. Won't take very long. Uh, got lots of cables to build, uh, but the sensors themselves are going to be pretty easy. Uh, I already got one actually put together. <clears throat> Here it is. This is water sensor. I'll just show you some quick shots of what it takes to build it, but one of the big things that we're going to do different with this one is have a new connector type. This is a mini DIN connector and I wanted to try to use it instead of the RJ45s uh, for two reasons. One, we're going to do a retrofit to an existing uh, installation. The automation sensors that we have out there, um, I've already you know, installed the boxes and everything and I don't want to take them all apart. So we're going to use uh, circular, we're going to use drill bit, we're going to punch through so I needed to find a connector that was circular. Uh, and then again this one's a little bit more robust it has some more protection on it and I actually really like how it goes together uh, no crimp tools or anything like that so I wanted to give it a try so we'll see how it works um, so yeah we're gonna get the sensors all built I got 12 of them total build I got one done already I got 11 more to go so yep. here we go. one of this process is to the board comes just like this little sensor from spark fun and we're gonna put one of our JST connectors on Getting better at this stuff. There we go. Right through there. The flux. And the next stop on the build the sensor tour here is to. I got all my cables cut to length, and I'm getting way better at this. This is a nice little tool here, the wire stripper. Put that on there a few times, and pop. Off comes the shield. Expose the wires. Due to that on the back side, I gotta do this, what is it, uh, 22 times. Okay, where I, I spared you the details of this one because it took me a little while. I got 11 of these that I did. So what you do next is you go through and there's normally eight wires in there and I got it down to the three that I wanna use. So now I gotta go trim each end and start building the uh, connectors, the JST connectors of the next one. JST connector on, there we are. Came out nice. I just have to do that 10 more times. 10 more times. There's a lot of cables. It took me about an hour, but I got all 11 of them uh, with the JST connectors on. So the next step is to actually put all the MD connectors on. So let's get started. All right, so these are micro D or uh, MD connectors. Micro DIN, I think is what it is. And it, they come in pieces like this. And you separate this off of there button here you press and these things come apart and the casing separates there we are see how that comes apart like that and you're not done yet this comes apart in here as well and you're left with this piece and this is where we connect everything. All the wires get connected back here and then you put it all back together again. So I gotta do this 11 times. Gotta remember to put the protective sheath on first. I always forget. All right, so we got the outer shell put on. I just gotta remember the sequence of putting the next shell on. Okay, so you get the outer shell on and then you just push that up and that holds it in place. And there we go. That's a really nice cable. On one end we have the JST connector. On the other end we got the MD connector. And then this has a mating couple here that's going to be put in the box and it plugs in like that. 
and then we'll screw it in place. Easy squeezy. Now I just gotta build all of them. All right, well, it's taken me about four hours, but I got all the cables done. So what we got here, each cable, lots of them. And then you have the actual connector from the cable. And then this is gonna be installed into the box. And then everything just slides it right in like that. And here's our water detector, water sensor. So we just gotta go, I already have done some software testing with these. Everything seems to be working correctly. So now it's time to go out and install. It's a lot of wire, a lot of cables. Patience, lots of patience required to do this, I have found out. Well, here we go. Out in lane two right now, and I'll have to admit, it's almost 80 degrees in here and it's about 50 degrees outside. So I'm really excited about the growth that's gonna start happening with these warmer temperatures. Uh, the building definitely keeps it warm enough in here. Uh, I'm so happy to be out of winter, you might say. We're not out of it yet, but uh, we're getting pretty darn close. Uh, here we go. Uh, so we're installing uh, the sensors uh, that you saw me putting together in the office here. What I've done is I've just taken some old conduit that I had and I cut it. Uh, it was about four inches and I put some slits in the top of it here. And I'm just using an old galvanized nail uh, to hold this thing in there. I had another one in there. Oh, there it is. Dropped out. Here we go, slide that in there. That actually holds it in there pretty nice. There we go. Oh. And I'm only going for a semi-temporary, semi-permanent solution, I'd say. This can be moved around because we are going to be redoing this whole bed. So I'm not looking at making a permanent installation quite yet. But uh, I kind of like how this turned out. I marked the water, or the uh, uh, the distance down here where the probe is actually at so we have somewhat of a calibrated instrument here we know where the water level uh, will be. So the next part of this operation is to actually install the uh, wires through the box so I have my new connector here we're going to drill a hole in the side uh, and run the wires through and connect them up to the Arduino. Okay. Well I just got done installing the first of the automation units for um, for water I shouldn't say automation units, the sensors uh, here's the cable coming off right here Decided to go in off to this side. Uh, it's away from the high power. As many of you have pointed out, I shouldn't have put the high voltage stuff in with the low voltage. When I redo everything uh, in HAB2, we're gonna go ahead and fix all that. So anyway, right now I got it coming in on this side and it's running over here. Show you. It's running and then it comes down and I decided to put it right here in the corner and I actually, watched it the bed fill and adjusted the height so I'm really happy I put the line on there so I could see but this is working so I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest of them here we go lane three we're on lane three right now and the water level is coming up it's almost to the turnoff point we're gonna see if this works if it does when this water level gets just a little bit higher, you should see that water turn off. It took me two days to go through and get everything installed. I had some troubleshooting to do as I have with everything. So um, I got through all of that. That worked. Uh, sometimes it's frustrating when you think you got everything done just right, but there's something inevitably that you forgot to do. All right, so in this case, we've had a successful failure. And what I mean by that is the valve worked, but unfortunately, the height where I have the valve switch at was just a little too high. What that meant is the water came right up to the water level, and then the drain activated, so it started going down, which allowed the water to continue to flow. So in this case, I'm just gonna spend a few hours. I'm gonna go through and actually kind of tune the system. I gotta make sure that these are exactly the right height to allow for the water to come up and the drain to start. Kind of a pain, but it's going to be worth it because this will really dial in the system. If you can imagine, and what I mean by that is, let's say you wanted to, to plant something that required a whole lot of water. Well, with these sensors, we can detect how much moisture is actually in the bed even after it's done filling. Not just what level the water is at, but how much moisture is actually there. That means that we can actually run more cycles through this to get more water for different plants. And conversely, let's say that you have a plant um, like cactus that doesn't need hardly any water. 
Well, the water sensor provides the exact same thing. We can detect how much moisture is left in the bed and not run the valves in order to make sure that that plant gets exactly what it wants. This is something that we have planned from the beginning. We just had to put it in right now because the water level, uh, you can see it's kind of green, it's just getting too moist. Um, in a normal aquaponic system without the automation, you would have your flood and drain system just constantly running, flood, drain, flood, drain, flood, drain. In our case though, we only have one pump running this entire lane. We did that because we don't have a lot of electricity to use. So each one of these beds has to go one at a time because there's not enough pressure to just turn them all on at one time unless we go buy a bigger pump which consumes more electricity, which would be El Bado. So that's why we're doing it this way. Other systems can do it differently, but remember, we're trying to make this fully sustainable and not use as much electricity as other folks do. So now I gotta go through and trick this all out. I'll tune in for another episode, or I'll tune you in for another episode so you can see how it all goes. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and if you want to get notified when we uh, release a new video, hit that little uh, bell right to the left to subscribe. I'm kind of tired. I'm ready to go out and have a good time. It's been a long week. So, everybody, this is The Real Martian. Out.